Hi everyone. Here we are once again. It's time for our encouraging words together. Every time we come to the Lord with a sincere heart, trusting in Him, looking to apply His Word to our lives, to believe it, to put it into action, and then to share our very heart with the Lord, trusting in the greatness of His love, there is hope and strength and encouragement to be found every single time. It's because God loves us. He's for us, not against us. He wants to see us fulfill his plan and purposes and be the people that he had in mind from the very beginning when he first thought of us. We can trust the Lord. It's good to turn to him and find the encouragement that always comes from his presence, by his spirit, and through his word. Thanks for joining us here today. If you ever heard this expression, God is good, you might almost hear echoing back the refrain, all the time. In fact, uh, for many years uh, in churches, and maybe in some still to this day, you might hear that refrain get called out as one person says, God is good, and the people answer all the time. And then it says, and all the time, God is good. It's true. But have you ever been tempted to question that truth? Life has a way of doing that to us. We, um, every single one of us, doesn't matter who we are, we will go through periods of life that are really hard. Moments of grief or disappointment or regret. Sometimes it's because of errors and mistakes that we make. Sometimes it's because of the errors and mistakes that others make. Sometimes it's just part of the natural process of life, maybe as a loved one passes away due to natural causes. Other times we experience tragedies terrible situations and accidents that just make it feel like the situation is so terribly unfair. There's nothing new there. The Bible is full of examples like that. So how can there be this declaration? And is it true? Is it just something we've learned to say? Or is there a, a foundation to be found in the scripture that declares that God is good. Well, actually, there are all kinds of them. But consider this one today. From the 119th Psalm, in verse 68, just before I read it, let me remind you that this entire psalm, the psalmist is proclaiming the goodness of God and the truth of his word. There are scriptures all throughout this psalm about living out God's word, about believing God's word, about asking for help that, that we might follow God's word, that we would live it out, that we would hold it dear in our heart, that we would hide it in our hearts so that we would not sin against the Lord. There are all these verses that champion the importance of living by the words that God has spoken, those things that he has revealed to us. Through, uh, through the scripture. And that thought is echoed when we read this in Psalm 119, verse 68, where the psalmist says to the Lord, you are good and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. It's a way of saying there's one that's good and it's not me. There's one that needs to learn to follow the law, to do what is right. And it's not God that has to figure that out. We need to figure that out. And even then, it's a prayer. God, help reveal your truth. Help me to follow your decrees. Teach them to me. I want to do that which is honorable and that which is right. That which is pleasing to you. That which helps my fellow man and makes a difference. And that which proclaims God's goodness. Because of the undeniable truth in the first part of the verse that you are good and what you do is good. It doesn't mean that every situation that comes our way feels good. It doesn't mean that every situation that comes our way is good. But God is good. And he's able to meet us at the point of that concern, whatever it is. And as we trust him, as we turn toward him and not away from him, we can find that despite how terrible the depths of the heartache of that situation might be, God can do a work of restoration in our heart. He can strengthen us from the inside out. He still loves, he still comforts, he still heals, he still directs, he still forgives, he still makes new, he still restores. There are all these qualities about God that he meets us in our pain. 
And the psalmist recognizes that the way to tap into that, the way to experience the goodness of God, is to orient our life around the truths of God's word, that we would believe them, that we would live them out to the best of our ability, and that when we fail, we wouldn't give up, but we would confess that to the Lord and say, help me, forgive me, teach me, lead me. God works in the hearts of those who turn to him like that. You know, the New Testament tells us in Romans 8, 28, the Apostle Paul says that God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. He didn't say that all things are good. He didn't say that everything that happens is good. But like Psalm 119 here, where everything he does is good, even as he meets us in the midst of pain and hard circumstances, only God can bring something good out of that. Like the phoenix who rises from the ashes, that mythological bird, that God takes and makes something beautiful out of the disappointments and heartaches and tragedies of life. So today is the day to trust him. And if you are in a celebratory mood, well, celebrate the goodness of God. And if you are in a place of turmoil, turn to the Lord and let your hope be upon him. His goodness will sustain you. It doesn't mean that the situation's easy. It doesn't mean that it's not going to be fraught with pain or difficulty. It does mean that that situation is not the end of the story. And for those who trust in the Lord, his goodness will prevail. You know, I have had tragedy in my own life. Um, some, you know, the, the death of family members, some due to cancer, some due to suicide, some because of murder, um, some because of living a, just a rough life that caught up with them. Um, and, and I'm not alone in that. Many of us are touched by the tragedies and the situations of those around us. And especially when it results in such finality like death, we can be caused to wonder, what good was that? Lord, how did that serve you? How can what you do be good if that was the end of the situation? And I can tell you this, it doesn't have to be the end of the situation. For those who trust in Christ, there is a hope of victory beyond this life. As we spend forever in the presence of the Lord, death gets swallowed up into victory. The pain and heartache and the sting of the grave is overcome by the everlasting joy and peace and love that we encounter for all eternity. God has swallowed up death in victory because of the wondrous work, the death and resurrection of Jesus that makes it possible. God is good and he's good all the time. What about when we don't know someone's eternal destiny? Well, let's learn the lesson. Let's choose not to ignore God. Let's choose not to live life according to just simply the dictates of our own heart. But may we learn the lesson to open up our hearts to Christ who offers redemption and help to every single person, regardless of our past. That's the good news of the gospel. That's why we see God's goodness in even the harshest circumstances. For even those that have lived their lives in opposition to God and his way, there is still hope while we have breath if we turn to him if we open our hearts to him, as we proclaim like the, the psalmist, Lord, I need you, teach me your ways. God loves us all, and he constantly reaches out to help, to redeem, and to make new. Do you need that help today? Do you need the assurance of his goodness? My encouragement to you is turn to him right now. I'm going to pray, but I encourage you to pray your own prayer at the same time. Call out to the Lord. Let him know that you need him. Ask him to, to if, if you need cleansing, ask him to do that. If you need assistance, ask him to bring that. If you need a resurgence of hope, ask him to rekindle that in you by his Holy Spirit. As we turn to the Lord and not away, there is always hope to be found. May you experience that hope even right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to reach out to you. I thank you that we can come to you as we are, wherever we are. 
And so here we are in various places at various times, and yet we yield to you and bring you our hearts. We confess our need for you. Jesus, we don't want to try to live in this life simply by our own intellect or talent or strength or ideas or anything that is ultimately and only dependent on our ability or strength. We cast ourselves onto your mercy. We trust you. We turn to you. Jesus, we confess you as Lord. And we ask that you help us in our point of need, even right now. Lord, particularly particularly today, for those caught up in difficult circumstances or hard moments, I'm praying that you would show yourself strong, that you would become the refuge and strong tower that brings support and helps people through this dark moment. Cause your goodness to prevail and instill in every heart, Lord, a persevering hope, a hope that's greater than the moment, knowing that you are good and everything you do is good all the time. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out that strength even now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. There's nothing wrong with having concerns or doubts or fears, but when we do, let's bring them to the Lord who receives us and pours out his heart to help us in that very moment. May you experience help in your heart and in the midst of your situation from the very presence of God, even right now. It's good to spend this moment with you. Thanks so much for tuning in for these encouraging words. Here at Friendship Village, we work hard to show you these videos three times a day. They're brand new at 4.30. This video will repeat at 8 o'clock tonight and then once again, 8 o'clock the following morning. We do that every day, Monday through Friday. But you can watch these videos anytime you like on YouTube. In fact, we encourage you now to go to our new Friendship Village Chaplain YouTube page, which you can find at youtube.com backslash the at symbol, then FBC Chaplain. You'll find many of our Encouraging Words videos. You'll find some links to all of the previous videos that we've recorded, hundreds of them. In addition, under the Live tab on that that website, you can see our uh, Wednesday night Bible studies. You can see our Sunday morning services. You can reflect on our memorial services uh, for the last month or so we've uh, we've been uh, that in fact that was the impetus for this new website um, so that people could access all of that material please tune in at your leisure if uh, you're watching this online you might know someone that could use some encouragement today consider sending them the link to today's video in fact you can subscribe to these videos and all the information that we put out by clicking on the friendship village logo right here Or if you're watching on uh, my website, it'll look like my face, the circle right above. Or you can click on the box below to see many of the videos in our past history. It's good to spend this moment with you today. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. And we'll see you next time.